One type of polymorphism you'll need to know is what we call static polymorphism. What does that mean? Let's take a look at our class and walk through several examples so we can gain a firm understanding of it and show it on our paper three and paper four exam. Here, I have public class greeting, and this has three attributes, name, age, and title, whatever their title may be, Mr., Mrs., Doctor, whatever it may be. Here, I have a method called hello with one line of text that says hello. Down here, I have another method with the same name, but it accepts one parameter, while my first one doesn't accept any parameters. Now I have a method, hello, that is overloaded. When we overload a method, we mean it has a different amount or different types of parameters being accepted. So let's take a look at the next one. Down here, I have another method, hello. Again, it is overloaded because it accepts two parameters, while my second one only accepts one, and my original one doesn't accept any. Down here, I have another method, hello, that is overloaded. That's because it has the same name as all my other methods. Now, it doesn't have to be four methods. It just needs to be two or more. Now, here, this one accepts one parameter. So does this one up here. But notice the data type of my first parameter being accepted, the one up here, that's a string. My parameter being accepted down here is an integer. That is allowed. What is not allowed is to have the same one. So let's say I have hello and I want to pass the title as a string. That's not allowed. The computer has no idea what the parameter T or what the parameter N is going to represent before the program is compiled. So it's going to say, hey, you cannot do that. So as long as the uh, parameter types are different or there's a different number, you can overload a method. Now, we call that overloading and static polymorphism. That's what you'll need to know for your paper three exam. For your paper four exam, you may need to show polymorphism. Now, I wanna be clear about this. In vb.net, using the keyword overloads is optional. My program will compile and will run just like this. The computer will know which method it needs to call based on the type and number of parameters that I'm going to pass. The next thing um, you need to know though, or what you need to know about overloads, even though it is optional, is you want to sh show Cambridge, you know where it goes and how to type overloading a method. It has shown up on every mark scheme, so you want to make sure you know where it goes. It simply goes after the word public. Public overloads. Sub hello. Now you're going to see three red lines pop up. We'll address those in a minute. You want to do overloads because you can overload a method uh, that doesn't return a value, so in this case a sub, or you can overload a function. It's all about the amounts and types of parameters that are accepted by that method. Now these three red lines, why have those shown up? If you use the keyword overloads with one method of the same name, you got to use it with all the methods that have that name. So I'm simply going to type in overloads. In here, uh, you'll see, oh, I typed it in the wrong place. So you definitely want to make sure you type it in the right place. It's important to know why we get red lines because you don't want to be in the middle of your paper four exam, have a red line and not be able to fix it. And simple mistakes like that can happen. But that is static polymorphism, which is overloading a method. Let's talk about overriding a method. So now it's time to talk about overriding a method, which is only impossible with inheritance. When we override a method, we're talking about polymorphism again, but this time dynamic polymorphism. Let's take a look at our code and then we'll uh, run through how to override a method. Here I have public class person. This is gonna be my super class. I have a name and ID. Both of those are my attributes. I have my constructor, which accepts two parameters, one for name, one for ID. I have my get details method. This is the one we're gonna be focusing on uh, in just a bit. I have my get name and get ID, which I'll need. Here I have my child class, teacher which inherits person. That means it inherits all the attributes and the methods. So this class, 
even though you don't see get details, has a get details method. Here, I call the constructor, so when I create a teacher object, I can call and pass those values to the constructor inside my parent or super class. Call that the super constructor. Here, I have another child class. This one called student, also inherits person. Even though you don't see the get details method, it does have that method inside of it. Again, it calls the super constructor because I need to pass name and ID to the constructor in the super class. I've created two objects. The first one is teacher one. That's gonna be Nicole. She has the ID of 997. Then we have student one, his name is Franck, and he has the ID of one, two, and three. Here, both of these call the get details method, which it has because of inheritance. So we run our program, we can see it does output the name and it outputs the ID. But what if I wanted to say the teacher's information is, the student's information is, I want those to act differently. What I need to do is, is I need to override that get details method. I have copied and pasted the get details class in my teacher class and inside my student class. You'll notice I have a green line and we get an interesting uh, message here. It says, function get details shadows an overloadable member declared in the base class person. If you want to overload the base method, this method must be declared overloads. And you may be saying, I thought we were talking about overriding. We are, but now this uh, teacher class, this student and teacher class, they have a function called get details that it has in its class, but it also has the same one from the super class. So there are now two get details. Neither one of them accept parameters. So the computer is going to say, hey, you're trying to overload a method here. You need to make sure you do it uh, properly. We're not interested in overloading. We're interested in overriding. I don't want to change the name of my method get details because that's what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to where my function get details is. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to over, I'm going to make it overridable. So right here after uh, public, you know, I said right after public and I moved the cursor right here. We're going to type in the keyword overridable. And what we're saying is this function can act differently inside our child class. So when we say this is overridable, we're saying, Hey, it's allowed to act differently, it's okay. We're gonna scroll down here. Here I have public function get details. I still have that because I have two get details method. Now, I'm gonna use a keyword, but not overridable because it's not this function that is overridable. It's the one in the parent class. So what is this function doing? It's overriding. And we use that with the keyword overrides. So public overrides function get details. Now the computer knows which method it needs to call at runtime. I'm gonna do the same thing here, public overrides get details. So now, yep, get details. So details, I don't know why I have that twice. That's definitely a, a typo. All right, there we go. So now, uh, when I call get details, because it has overridden the one in the super class, it's acting different, which is why we call it polymorphism. So we're gonna save, we're gonna run our code, and this time we should see the teacher's details are, we do, the name, the ID, the student's details are, name and ID. So we have overridden the method inside the super class. That is static and dynamic polymorphism. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. And we'll see you guys in the next computer science video.